All right, Luke chapter 17. I want to thank Pastor Brandon for just hitting a grand slam. Man, if you missed, listen, listen, I mean this. If you missed any one of those three uh, Sundays that he spoke, go and listen to it week two uh, on forgiveness. I'm going to tell you, forgiveness, I love receiving forgiveness. It's a whole different ball game when I got to give it. And he just laid that out great. I love Brandon. And uh, me and my wife, we're doing some missionary work. <clears throat> we went to Honduras and uh, Costa Maya and, and Cozumel. We were on a cruise. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it almost sounded spiritual, didn't it? They're like, oh, wow. Wow. So, and then last week I did a wedding, and, and, but we're here, and I love you, and I'm going to finish the series I started five weeks ago. Where are the nine? Here it is, Luke 17, 11. On the way to Jerusalem, he is passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers. This is Jesus, right? And they stood at a distance, and they lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest, because the priest had to deem them clean. So that was a tradition. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, we're not ten cleansed, we're the nine. Was no one found to return to give praise except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. It's made you well. Uh, there's some serious speculation on who this guy who comes back is. And if you know anything about scripture, you know there's Jesus is in the house of Simon the leper. And a lady comes in and breaks an alabaster box. You ever heard that story of precious ointment? And it just remember, and, and they kind of ridiculed her for it could have been sold. It was Simon the leper in his house. Also, it's speculated that this, it's this guy, but also this guy is the dad of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. He has an encounter with Jesus, right? And, and through that, has a part of history. It is possible, right? Because a couple different things happen here. The nine, actually the ten were healed one comes back and he has something else that they didn't get he says you're made well your faith has made you well and we'll talk about the difference in that okay uh, because it is possible to be healed and not be made whole it is possible to be cleansed from the sickness of sin and we're all sinners i'm probably the chiefest like paul the guy speaking to you is probably the least qualified Do you feel better? Okay. <clears throat> it, it is possible to be because when I put my faith in Jesus Christ, the moment I put my faith in Jesus Christ, I am justified. That, that, <clears throat> that is an instant thing. I am in right standing with God. The righteousness of Jesus, the gift of righteousness, I'll be talking about this in the coming weeks, is a gift to me. It's not earned. And so the righteousness of Jesus is placed on, on me, and I put my faith in him, and uh, I, I am released from, right, the penalty of sin, but yet not walking. I can get to a place that I'm not walking in the life-changing power of Jesus, right? I can be uh, released from the penalty because that's what happens when we get saved. We're released from the penalty of sin, but can still be under the power of and have the presence of some of those things in my life. Uh, we see nine were cleansed. The one came back. He was made well. The ten did what Jesus said. All ten of them walked, and as they walked, they were cleansed. As they walked in faith, they were cleansed, right? And he said, go show yourself to the priest. Uh, one saw that he was cleansed. He came back to Jesus and praised him. And I talked about this uh, the last time we were together as to why he didn't just go ahead and go to uh, the priest as well. Number one, he was a Samaritan. Jesus even calls him a foreigner. He was not a Jew. He could not go to the priest. 
the priest was Jewish. These other guys, they were Jewish. He says they're Jews. He didn't have a place to go. He, he would, he, he's kind of like back in those days, like it is now, if you go somewhere, and uh, Angie and I, I think it was on, on our missions trip, <laughs> someone asked where we was from, and I said, Vado, they went, oh. <laughs> so when you were a Samaritan back in those days, it was about the same way. So he could not go to the priest. So he comes back to Jesus, falls at his feet, and he praises him. Obviously being cleansed or healed, uh, it was something that was obvious to the eye. The priest, in order to put them back into society, had to see some kind of visible change for, to know that, they were, that, 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 that uh, sickness was no longer you know, evident in their life. Otherwise, he couldn't deem them clean. But I feel the difference in being healed and being made whole or being cleansed or being made well, and I think the difference is significant. Uh, I believe that cleansed meant the disease was gone. Okay. But I also believe the effects and the hindrance of the disease was still there, and I'll explain this in a moment. The nub was still there because leprosy was a death by inches. All right? It, 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 it started, it was, it was like diabetes times a million. And it would slowly eat away your limbs, your ears, your nose. It, 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 that's what it did. And it, it, it ate it away by rotting it off. And so you understand that it was bad, right? Just the smell and these people couldn't. It was very contagious. And so what happens when they were healed, I believe the scabs were gone. The nub was still there. Uh, it was just not evident anymore. Uh, but also there was a daily reminder, a daily reminder of who they used to be. And I believe it was a constant struggle. Anybody? I believe this story is not just about being thankful. Right. I don't, I don't, a matter of fact, I don't know this story is about being thankful. I also believe it's about being content with the hindrances in our lives. Now, I've got hindrances in my life. Thank God some of them through the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, we, we have brought under control, but I still have hindrances in my life. And I believe when we act in faith as they did, as we talked about in week one, I believe that we're saved and salvation is a great thing. You won't get off this earth without it, right? The curse of sin and the penalty of sin is lifted off of us and we're declared clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. Isn't that cool how red blood can make you clean? But just because I've been set free from the penalty of sin doesn't mean I've been set free from the effects of that sin. Hello. And I don't believe it's the will of God to just save us and not set us free. I don't think it's his will for us to have to struggle and be hindered by the old me. Right? Because I know the old me is still creeping around. Matter of fact, I don't have to do nothing I don't have to create the old me. He's, a, he's like a bad relative. He always shows up at the wrong time. <laughs> Unannounced, right? Many people, I see it all the time. I talk to people all the time and, and are just content with being saved. Matter of fact, there's, there's people that are raising kids going, please, Jesus, come before they hit puberty. Please come, Jesus, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, it's that rapture mentality. Please come. Well, he might not, so let's, let's do things right and let's raise him right and just in case he doesn't. Uh, but many people are just content with being saved. You know, having the approval, just having the approval of the priest or the people, right? They are restored back into the family. That's what happened when they went. You could go back to your family. They were now, they could attend a church. Right? They could put a nickel in the plate and uh, they got baptized and they went through the ceremonial rites of the church and man, they got, everything was good. They were back at Christmas and Thanksgiving and they got to go to the kids' birthday parties and do slippy slides and bouncy houses. <laughs> Yet their past still ruled them.
old attitudes still control their actions, and they just learn to live with it, right? But it slows my walk, you see, and it hinders my commitment. Nine were content with the cleansing power of Christ, but one, one wanted to know the Christ. He wanted to follow the, the Christ. He wanted a relationship with the Christ. The approval of people was great. Being a part of the people was great. Having fellowship with others was great. To everybody else, you are accepted. But you know, listen, I know. How many, how many of you know yourself today? Okay, that's not a trick question. I, man, you'd think I was preaching on tithing today or something. as quiet as in here. How many of you know yourself? Okay, I'm going to ask that again. Maybe I need to do a series on how to know yourself. I know me. I know my weaknesses. Brandon, do you know yours? Because you're a preacher. You've got to be honest. <laughs> Megan, do you know your weaknesses? Yes. How many? I'm going to ask you again one more time so we can move on. How many of you know yourself? Yes. Thank you. Whew, man. <laughs> I know who I am. And I know who I don't want to be. And I know that I haven't become everything that Christ has created me to be. And I have to go beyond just wanting the experience of salvation to pursuing the Savior, to having a relationship with Him. It would be like just getting married. Like I said, I did a wedding last weekend. It would just like be, I'm just going to, it's, I've said this before, and I got kicked back on it and all that stuff, but I haven't been here in a while, so I'll, I'll do this. Hear me out. Just because you're married doesn't mean you're in a relationship. You have a relationship. Relationship is relating. It's doing life. It's loving and living, right? And touching and squeezing. Hugging. That's journey. Don't make me sing it, I will. <laughs> How many of you know this right here from Bucky's? This is from Bucky's. This is a rubber ring from Bucky's. Because I lost my other ones and I went to Bucky's and this is Bucky, $13 or something. How many of you know this, this right here just says I'm married? But it has nothing to do with relationship. It, it doesn't say, hey, me and my wife are on good terms. We're communicating good, right? A lot of times this can be a smoke screen. Hello. I, I know just because it is, there's people here today, you had intense fellowship on the way to church, right? But it's something about pulling in this parking lot, the holy of holies of concrete. You act, you think, you act like I'm not married. I just spent seven days on a ship with my wife <laughs> doing mission work, right? Listen to me. You, you can switch it and you walk in like, oh, praise God. And everybody's like, God, I wish I had a marriage like that. Right? And there's some wise one. I wish you would stick your hand in my pocket and walk down the aisle. <laughs> right? Don't do that. <laughs> I can't make this up. This is not a lie. This, this wasn't at this church. There used to be a couple and they had the worst marriage. I, I did counseling. They had like a horrible marriage, like fist fought. And it was bad. Like, and she whipped him. She whipped him like housewives of butter. It was. <laughs> it, I mean, the girl was she was bad as a bone. She put a whooping on that boy. But the funny thing is something about the holy concrete. They would literally he would put her on the hood of the car, and they would make up make out after church, so people would come out and people were like, "Oh my God, what a marriage!" And I'm going, "That's a lie. There's no relationship there. This is a front." So it is possible, and I know I'm going to get kicked back, but I don't care. It is possible to get saved and never go from there and pursue a deepening relationship with Jesus. Just sit on my holy haunches and wait for him to come. Come on. You know somebody like that, don't you? I'm thankful for the gift of salvation he's given me. But I want the one who gave me the gift. I want to know him. 
Sadly, I see this today. More people are, are, are worshiping ritual and tradition more than following Jesus. Many, and, and I've been here, I've done this. Many perform outward religious actions. Nine obey the rituals. One comes back to praise Jesus. And it's very simple why he did that. He wanted Jesus. He wanted to be pleasing to Jesus more than he wanted to please people. You see, the other nine were cleansed but not made whole. They had to live a life of trusting the word of a man. Somebody please hear me. Trusting the word of a man and constantly checking their skin to see if it was coming back. I'm glad I don't have to trust a man. I'm glad you don't have to trust me to go, you're clean. Because all I can see is the outward. I don't know the heart. Only God does. We as people look at what people do. Only God knows why they do it. He knows their story and everybody has a story. Therefore, he is the honest, holy judge. I can't. But anybody here today, right? Anybody want to know Jesus? I want to know Jesus. But one man went back to the source of the power and he got something that the approval and the acceptance of man wouldn't get him. He was made well. It was a step beyond the cure. The others were cleansed. He was restored. He had new fingers. He had a new arm. He had new ears. He had a new nose. Come on, I believe that what happened to him is he was completely restored. Where the other ones were cleansed, he was restored. We all have a past in here. If you knew some of the people on your road, that their past, you might move. <laughs> but to me, I don't move. I celebrate because I get to look at them and see the saving grace of Jesus Christ. We, we can be satisfied with just being cleansed. Or we can come face to face with Jesus in honesty, which I believe is worship. I believe worship is honesty. Come on, somebody. That we worship him in spirit and truth. I believe, I believe the people that you trust most, you're honest with, right? Anybody got any good friends that you're honest with? I have two friends in my life. Both of them are pastors and they're overseers of his church that know everything about me. And the reason why I tell them everything about me is because I trust them. And if someone shares something very deep with me, that means that they trust me with everything. I want to tell you, I, I believe there's no greater relationship sign in the Father's eyes, that when we bring something to him, so personal, so intimate, so whatever, and we give it to him, that means that he, he is trustworthy and that we trust him with everything. And I believe that's the deepest form of worship you can ever be. Not, not to bring him my best, but to bring him my everything. How many of you know he wants your junk too? I have to get close enough to him. And I think that looks different for everyone. Uh, there, there's some people who can pray a couple hours a day. I, I can't. And prayer is powerful, and I believe in the power of prayer. Uh, but I don't think it has to be quantity. I believe it just needs to be quality. I'm ADD, HD, OD. I almost said it again. Last time I said double D, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, really, God created me. He knows me. So I have to be very creative with my prayer life. I can't just kneel in one spot for an hour. Anybody else? Uh, I can't, but I can sit down with the Word all day. Everybody here is different. You, you need to find out what works with you because every marriage is different. Every marriage has a love language, right? There's some people who are words of affirmation. There's some people who are touch. I don't know what combination you got going on, but you need to figure it out. But it's the same way with Jesus. We, however you communicate with him and however your relationship looks with him, you can't document it and say this is the gospel. Whatever works for you, do it, but make sure you do it because there's something about a relationship with him that'll take us further, right? He, he, yes, he saved me. Yes, he set me free. Yes, he gave me eternal destination. But I want to tell you, he wants to do some incredible things with me while I'm still here awaiting his return. Amen. Let me move on. What Jesus did for one, he wanted to do for the other nine. That's why he said, we're the nine. 
There are people here today who've been set free. Not just from the penalty of sin, but the effects of that. That's the stronghold. They've been broken. And what Jesus has done for them, he wants to do for us. Satan, how many of you know he's real? Three people. He wants us to think that the way we are is the way we'll always be. But what he knows is when we get to the place that we start wanting Jesus more than we want what Jesus can do for us, and we start truly trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit, that we will be made whole. And when we are made whole, something transforms in us, right, that supersedes our salvation and the knowledge that one day we will be with him. It gets us to a place that, hey, he is with me now. I can do things now. He wants to work through me now. The Holy Spirit is evident with me now. I am now the temple of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't dwell in buildings anymore. Aren't you glad of that? Somebody said, we got to go to the church. We need the Holy Spirit to come. Listen to me. I took the Holy Spirit to tractor supply with me this week. Right? And it wasn't nothing weird. He just dwells in me. I am now the temple of the Holy Spirit. A very... Uh, out of proportion temple but nonetheless a temple and he dwells within me when we start realizing what we've got and who we are we will not just settle for a, a salvation experience and thank God for that that is my ticket out of here but while I'm here how incredible would it be to see God that is in me work through me and do something amazing yeah In the book of Mark, the book of Mark, it's a famous story, and uh, here it is, Mark 8, 22. So they come to Bethesda, and, and many people brought to him uh, a blind man and begged him to touch him. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. I'm about to land a plane. I know you got pictures and great stuff. And he took the blind man, this is Jesus, he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked, do you see anything? It's a logical question. He, the man, looked up and said, I see people, but they're looking like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. First thing that jumps out to me here is, they asked Jesus to touch this man. Now, there's, a, there's several different stories, and don't get this confused with the time he hawks up a loogie and spits in the ground and makes a mud pie and sticks it on a blind man. Got, Jesus literally spits, come here. He's blind. He don't know what's about to come, but he has probably good ears. And he's like, right? Yeah, I don't know if you YouTube or not, but go on there where the pastor is the pastor. I don't know what church he pastors, but I promise you it ain't this one. Because <laughs> I'd, get, I'd get punched with this church if I did. He literally is, is talking about this and reenacts it and calls some dude up out of the crowd. Bobby c come up here and he, he got <laughs> and spits in that dude's eyes. And that dude takes it, right? I'm like, I, I, I don't know what I'd do, right? <laughs> But Jesus, they ask him to touch this man. They bring him to touch. Why is that? Because obviously they had seen Jesus in the past or heard stories because he does touch some blind men. We do have scripture and they were made whole. Right. And so Jesus takes this man by the hand and leads him out of the village. He gets the man away from the crowd and away from people. Now, there's a whole lesson in this. I think, yeah, I'm going to say it. So I think some of the best things that we can probably do and that I did in my life, especially early on, is to break ties with some people. Now, I don't mean your spouse. If you, you leave here and say, oh, preacher, tell me to break ties with you, and I'm going to have like a line of people out here wanting to do things to me tomorrow. You're stuck with them, and you need to figure it out. Work that out. They obviously had seen him touch others and receive their healing, but Jesus takes them away from people, 
And they had begged Jesus to touch this man, but Jesus spits. Listen, how radical this is different. I'm going to tell you, most of the things I pray for, when he does answer, it had nothing what I thought it was going to be. Come on. You ever pray for something, you're like, you got this, this idea, it's going to be like smooth and creamy? Right? This is the way I want it to come out. And he does it, and it's like spit in your eyes. But I don't know if you've ever been so desperate. There is a place of desperation we can reach that I don't care if he spits in my eyes as long as he takes care of the situation. Anybody been there? Jesus could have touched the man. He could have healed him. But Jesus did not want to be put in a box of preconceived ideas. So he spit in his eyes, showing he is a God who is not limited to the past. And now Jesus touches the man and says, what do you see? Do you see anything? And he says, I see people, and they look like trees walking around now. So Jesus says, okay, you're better than you were, so go on your way and make the best of it. No, he touches the man a second time. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Whether you're online listening today around the world or whether you're sitting here this morning or whether you're stalking right now wanting to know if you really want to come to second service or not. There's people who do that. Ah, I don't like what's on the buffet today. I'll just stay home. So what, if that's you, it is easy to become complacent. Living, listen to me please, living in the land of better than I used to be and we've settled there, believing that there, this is all there is. This is who I'll be forever. But Jesus was not content with this man just being better than he used to be. And he's not that way with us. He wants to help us be all that we're supposed to be. Jesus, listen to me, don't just want your marriage to work out. Jesus wants your marriage to be happy. I have people all the time, we're just working this out till the kids get out of the house and then it's over with. That's not the will of God. The will of God is you fall in love again and you're happy. Remember those days when you broke your neck to open the door? Remember those days that you didn't care how rough his hands was or how he smelt when he got off work? Remember those days when he brought seafood home from McDonald's? <laughs> and you were okay with that. Come on. My God is a God who restores. With the nine lepers, he wanted for them what the one got. With the blind man, he led them away from people. Because with the first touch, listen to me, and this is so true. With the first touch and the guy seeing better than he did before, people could have got so happy, right? You ever pray for somebody, you start seeing a little change, and you get really happy? Man, I have. This is incredible. She cleaned her room. <laughs> people could have gotten so happy with the first touch that he could see better that the man could have stopped at pleasing people and what they said, but that's not what Jesus had in store for him and not what everybody says is, is the mouth of God. But Jesus wanted his sight fully restored and for him to see everything clearly. Everything clearly. <laughs> Mark 10, 51, Jesus asked what I used to think was a dumb question, but I don't think it's a dumb question anymore. I think it's got a, a lot of validity. He asked this blind man, what do you want me to do for you? Huh? Think about the question. I have five, man, I'm doing really good on time. Is that, is that for real? Is that for real? Mike, am I good on time? Wow, whoa, gee, take more time off. <laughs> do more missions work. Jesus comes to this blind man. He says, what do you want me to do for you? How many of you think that's a logical question? I like to tell. (laughs) 
Seems like it would be obvious, doesn't it? Yet Jesus, Jesus knows something that we don't, I think, realize. Sometimes people don't want to get better. I know people who love to have their name on a prayer list. They don't want healing. They want attention. And some of the things they put on there, I don't need to know. <laughs> Hello. I'm telling you, I'm writing a book one day calling it The Church. I'm changing names to protect the guilty. <laughs> We're going to talk about some stories and people are going to go, there's no way. Oh, yeah, you can't make it up. Oh, yeah, yeah, they said that. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's coming from where? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Sometimes, here, here's why, I'll, t- I'll explain this to you. People don't want to get better because people can become dependent on a broken way of life. The blind beggar, watch this, the blind beggar who had always depended on people, if he gets healed and if he gets his sight back, He'd have to go to work. Because there ain't nobody back in that day. It's going to give a dude who's sitting on a can and now can see, going, alms, money, uh uh-uh. So Jesus' question, listen, listen, listen. Jesus' question is this. What do you want me to do? And he could have said, oh, I'm good. Because here's the deal. Here's the deal. Jesus asked us all that question. Here's why. Are you just content with salvation? Here's why. Because if you say no, 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 I want to be, I want to be made whole. This, this is what it means, and this is why many people, there's people that's been in this church for 15 years that ain't ever got past that, and here's the reason why. Because when I say to him, I want to be made whole, he says, good, I have something for you to do. You were created for more than warming a bench. I created you with a purpose. I gifted you. And now, listen, when I touch you a second time, when I heal you of your infirmity, I have a plan and purpose for your life. And most people, listen, listen, most people, it's about 25% that say yes. I can prove the statistics. Only 75% now say, I'm good with salvation. I'm good with salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Don't just settle. So on, on our missions trip in Honduras, and I've been to Haiti, Honduras is about as bad. There was a boy, his name was Alan. His name was Alan. I met Alan. Alan was selling trinkets. And look, that's why I, I don't do real good on mission trips because I'm, I'm a strategist, right? When I was in Haiti, we gave goats away, right? They ate the goats. I'm like, gosh, you just, if you could have bred the goats. I think it works in Haiti. When a male and a female goat get together, they have a lot of times twins and maybe triplets. And I'm thinking, why don't we put some chicken coops in here and you can have fresh eggs. You don't even need a rooster. You don't even have to put up with a rooster. You can have fresh eggs every day. And the missionary said, they'll eat the chickens. That just drives me crazy. So Alan was selling trinkets. And so was everybody else on the beach. I'm like, Alan, come here. He kept hounding me, hounding me. And sir, he, he locked in on me. I've got, like, it's right on my head. Everywhere I go, you ask my wife, some, I don't know. I like to say it's the Holy Spirit, but it's not. <laughs> and so I finally, he, he gave me some absurd price for some turtle you can get off Amazon with a piece of string and da 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 he said my mother carved it I said dude it's plastic it's got China wrote on the back <laughs> anyway I brought him here I said come here come here Alan Alan I'm gonna I'm give do you have access to Wi-Fi Alan he said I have a friend and I said good I gave him a website to go on <laughs> it's just me it's where I am I, it just drove me crazy <laughs> you're, boy you're selling for nothing you can do better I said it's called Oriental Trading. 
every Sunday school teacher in here knows what Oriental trading is. Because you can get a ton of junk for nothing. I said, look, your profit margin is bad, son. He didn't even know what profit margin was. He's looking at me. I said, go to Oriental trading. You need to get something that the, none of these other boys, y'all all pushing the same product. Everybody's got turtles on a string. He's looking at me. I said, son, you need something else. A bird, a fish, a marijuana leaf. I don't know. You need something different. He's, <laughs> I didn't mean to go there. Here's the question. Are you content? Or do you want to be made whole? Jesus has a great plan for you. He has a great plan for you. He will ask something of you. He will ask to get out of your comfort zone. But, 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 but. You'll see something and hear something for him that most people don't hear. Oh, thank God for salvation. Without it, we're lost. And you will hear something and see something from him that not many people see and hear. Right? I want to be made whole so I can do everything that you have for me to do. Anybody here today? Anybody here today? I don't want to just settle just for being saved. I want to be set free. I want to be free to follow you, free to be used by you, free, free, free. And he that the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Let's stand. Listen to me, church. I want to tell you this, and I think it's something the Holy Spirit laid on my heart, and I had time to myself. As the church, we've been too guilty of cursing the darkness. It's easy to curse the darkness, isn't it? It's easy to say the world's going to hell and that politician, that he cursed the darkness. That's what the church is now becoming, a curse the darkness. You know, we were never called to curse the darkness. We were called to turn on the light. We are salt and light, not cursors of darkness. We're not here to curse the darkness. We're here to say, here's the answer. Hello, somebody. And I am bound and determined, right, for Turning Point Church of Vider, Samaria, right, to keep doing what we've been doing and saying, here's the answer instead of there's the problem. Here's the answer. It's Jesus Christ. He's crazy about you. He, he saw you before you were even born. And I'll tell you what, he's got an incredible plan for you. If you, if you haven't put your faith in Jesus, nothing else matters. That is first and foremost. You have to get your eternity in place by putting your faith in him and then taking off my filthy self and putting it on him and saying, Jesus, what you did on the cross, I believe it was good enough for everything I've ever done or ever will do that is against your will. And I want to tell you, listen, and I invite him in, the Holy Spirit comes in, and I am not created to sit down on the sidelines. He has created me to get in the game. And I will tell you, you'll never be truly satisfied in a relationship with Jesus until you're doing that. And that is his will. I want to pray for you. Listen, and don't pray this prayer if you're not serious. All right? But if you're serious about life, I, I, want, I want to move. I, what, what do you want? I want to be made whole. I want to be made whole. Anybody? Let you pray with me. Father, take me just as I am, but don't leave me this way. I want to be everything that you had in mind when you planted me in my mother's womb. Everything you had in mind, I want to be that. Don't, don't let me just, don't let me just settle. Don't let me just be content. Lord, take me. Do something with me. Do something with me. I, I, don't want to just, I don't want to just sit here and stop here. I want to be made whole. I want to be usable in your hands.
I want to be, I want to see the kingdom of God on earth work through me. I want to see lives changed, right? Through my story of look what the Lord has done. Lord, I pray for Turning Point Church right here. As we do our best to reach around the world and reach our cities and our communities, our families, everything. Lord, we need a testimony, right? Not just what you saved me from, but what you're doing with me now. And Lord Jesus, if you can do anything with someone like me, you can do incredible things with anybody. And I am yours fully and totally. I surrender myself to you. Come on, somebody. I surrender my future to you. I surrender my gifts and talents to you. Take me and make me whole. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Somebody in the house say amen.